It said that over 30% of all React applications have Tanstack query installed in them, but are you getting the most out of your Tanstack query installation? Well, let's find out. Let's take a look at three awesome new Tanstack query features. One of them is in the main branch. Two more are experimental, and I'm gonna give you a little bonus bit right at the end. Let's get right into it. All right, the first one I'm gonna take a look at is infinite queries. This is in the Tanstack main branch, so you'll have access to this right now in any application that's up to date with Tanstack query. So what are infinite queries? Well, the type of query that just keeps on adding more data as the user wants to see more on the page. And usually the signal of adding new content to the page is that the user scrolled down all the way to the bottom of the page and they wanna see more items. So let's go take a look at our example. Of course, all of this code is available to you for free in a GitHub link in the description right down below, as well as all of the links to these resources. So take a look over here at the infinite queries route, and we can see, and then we're starting off with the cutest demo here. This is our puppies demo. So let's bring up the network tab and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So when I hit refresh here, we can see that we get one call to this source routes infinite. We'll take a look at that in a second. And that result has all of these dogs. Now, as we scroll down, we get a load more button. We click on that and we get another invocation and we get more dogs and more results. And they come in in batches of 10. But what we really like to do is have it so that when we scroll down to the bottom here, we look to see how we intersected with the bottom of the page. And if we have, then we want to load more content. So we're going to use an intersection observer. And for that, we're going to bring in a React hook. So let's go take a look at the existing implementation, then we'll upgrade it to have this intersection capability. So the route we're looking for is infinite. Now right at the top here, we have a constant that says that we want 10 dogs per page, and we have a server function that's gonna give us those 10 dogs. And we're gonna get a page parameter as in part of the invocation of that server function. Then the handler is gonna return this formatted JSON blob that's got the next cursor as well as the dogs that we're gonna just create we're gonna use placedog.net for that. Now to use this, let's go down into the route component and we can see this new use infinite query hook, kind of like use query, but it's infinite. And it takes the things we've come to know when it comes to Tanstack query, like the query key, as well as the query function. And the query function in this case is going to call that server function. You could call an API endpoint, that's up to you. I'm just using a server function here because it's really easy. And we got some parameters specific to infinite, which would be the initial page parameter, and then the get next parameter, which would give us like what we want for the next page. Coming back, we're gonna get pages inside of data, and then within that, data inside of each page. So we're gonna just flatten that out and then format that into a wrapping flex box. Now, currently we have this button down here, and that's actually what's calling this fetch next page, which we get back from use infinite query that gives us our next page. So instead, what we wanna do is put a div down there and have it use an intersection observer to say that when it shows up on the screen, we want to call fetch next page. So we're going to bring in a hook for that and it's called use intersection observer. Now down here, we're going to invoke that hook and we get back two really important items. One is a Boolean, whether we're intersecting or not. And the other is a ref that we're going to attach to a div that's located at the end of the page. So that when that div scrolls into view, we're going to be intersecting with it. That is intersecting is going to go true. And at that point, we want to call that fetch next page. So let's create our div. I'm just going to replace that button because we're no longer going to need it. With a div that just gives us a little bit of feedback, intersecting and not intersecting, you can make that whatever you want. You can just have it be empty if you really want. And then we need a use effect to monitor that Boolean. So let's bring that in. And we'll say that when is intersecting goes true, then we'll fetch the next page. So it's going to go true as it's seen and then it's gonna go false as it's unseen. And at that point, we are good. We don't wanna fetch the next page. Then as the user scrolls up, we're gonna get true again, and so we'll fetch the next page. All right, let's give it a try. All right, let's start up at the top. Now, right out of the box, it actually was intersecting. So that's why we got two requests for the data. You can obviously clean that up if you want. So we've got 20 dogs here currently. Let's just keep on scrolling down, all these cute dogs. And then, boom, we hit the bottom, and we loaded more dogs. Boom, we hit the bottom and we loaded more dogs. Awesome. All right, that was infinite queries. Let's talk next about my favorite feature in this batch of three, and that's streamed queries. So, so traditionally with Tanstack query, it was 
you ask for data, you get back data, and that's it. It's kind of one transaction. Well, nowadays, we do a lot of streaming, particularly with AI. You're getting back a stream of tokens, and you want to show those as quickly as you get them. So we want to have a streaming capacity inside of Tansac Query, and now we have it. But it is experimental, so watch out. All right, let's take a look. So if I go back to my demo page, we've got streamed queries coming off an API and then streamed queries coming off a server function. So let's take a look at first at streamed queries coming off an API. All right, so we get this process status and then every second we get some new status updates from some process that we've got. We're stabilizing the universe, awesome. Let's go take a look at how we're doing this. So we've got an API endpoint called slash API streamed query and in response to a get, it returns a new readable stream. Now, all you need to do with start is just give us back a stream and we'll stream data back. It's that easy. So we create this new readable stream. Then when we start, we send off immediately setting up the polarity confabulator and then we just sleep for a second. And then we send something else and send something else and send something else. And eventually we do that controller.close when it's done. Now, of course, you can send back anything you want. You don't have to send back text. You can send back JSON, send back whatever you want through this stream in any way that you want it. This is just an easy demo to show how it works. So now that we know how this API works, let's talk about how this is actually used inside of Tanzac Query. So here's the corresponding route that brings in this experimental streamed query and maps it to streamed query. Now, streamed query takes a query function, maybe confusingly a little bit, that gets given a generator. So in this case, it's an async generator. And the idea of a generator is that every time you get something new, you can yield it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to call that API stream query with a simple fetch. We get back a reader in this case. That's what you do with streams. And then we cycle around that reader reading the input that comes back as a uint8 array. So we then need to decode that into text. But if we're done, we want to break. Actually, I think that should be the other way around, fix that. But most importantly, then we yield that text and that becomes part of an array that is data. So data is going to be an array of all of those text fragments. Down the code, we simply just iterate through that array and show it. And that's as easy as it is. So there you go. That's using an API. Let's take a look at what it is to do it with server functions. So we're doing exactly the same thing here, but now with server functions. And if we look over at the code, we go fix that bug again. There we go. We have a new server function called get stream data that uses a get just like that API endpoint and has the exact same response mechanism as that API endpoint. The one thing that you have to do here is you have to use response raw to say that we want to go and send back, in this case, a readable stream not sending back a JSON blob. So that's the one thing you need to do here that's a little bit different when you do your create server function. All right, let's talk about our third amazing new feature, and that's broadcast query. Not much to look at currently. Let's take a look at the documentation on it. So the broadcast query client is another experimental feature. So what is this about? Well, broadcast channels allow you to send data between different windows within the same browser really easily. So imagine if the Tanzac query cache were actually shared between all of the windows of your application. So you have a customer that's looking at the same application in multiple windows simultaneously. You want to be able to make a fetch in one and then just teleport the data over into the other and not actually have to go and refetch it over there, although it might be in the cache, but whatever. Let's just say that you want to go and get that optimization. So the way that you can do that is you can use one of these broadcast channels. So let's give this a try. So what we need to do is actually set up our application. So we have two of them side by side. We'll go to localhost 3000 and broadcast query. And now I'll type something here and it'll show up over there through that broadcast channel. It's crazy. So how is this actually done? So the only systemic change you need to make is when you create your query client. So over in root provider in, in the integrations Tensec query, we're creating the query client on every request. And then we're going to use that broadcast query client to connect to that query client and essentially subscribe to it. And then we're going to broadcast changes to that query client on that channel. Now, of course, all the other tabs on that same app are also going to be subscribed to that same channel. They're going to get those updates and make those changes. 
Now, another cool thing about this is how we actually use it because we're actually using Tansac Query here as more like a state manager, a shared state manager. And to do that, we're probably using use query like you may have never have seen it. All we're doing is just giving a, a query key. In this case, text is the query key that we wanna go and put that text into. So the current state of text is gonna come back as data from that use query. But in order to change it, we're going to get the query client directly using use query client. And then as we type into it, we're gonna then directly go and set the query data on that query client, given that key of text with the new target value. And because we got that broadcast channel thing going on, that's immediately gonna get sent over to the other instance of the browser, which is gonna set it on that end. And that's how we get it showing up on both sides simultaneously. Pretty cool, right? Well, it all comes down in this case to the keys. And that's the one last thing I wanna show you is this really neat external library that creates a type safe named query system for TanStack Query. It's called the React Query Key Manager. I think maybe it should be Tanzac Query Key Manager, but that's fine. And what it does is manage these keys. You create them, and then in a very type safe way, you can just call the methods that you get back, like in this case, user keys.profile with a user ID, and it'll give you back the right key for that. It's really nice because we've got two different instances of use query that actually use the same key in two different spots, which is not great. You should probably just share that as a hook. But if you do that, then this is a nice way to make sure that all of those are in sync between every invocation. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this look at Tansac Query and three amazing new features from it. If you have any questions or comments, please put that in the comment section right down below. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.